there are 76 million of us just here in the US. We are the biggest generation that ever existed. We were called the me ones, the crazy ones, and boy, do we know what that means, don't we? In fact, we have reinvented every single phase of our life. We were the yuppies, we were the hippies. We like innovation. Well, now we are in the winter of our life. And I can assure you, this is not going to be your average winter. I invite you to join me at Boomerology Reviews every single week so we can figure out how boomers are reshaping this phase of their lives. Join me. This episode of Boomerology Revealed is brought to you by Standard, your best option for mobility products. Be independent with Standard.com. Welcome to Boomerology Review TV. I'm Shahar Boyai and your host. In the next 20 minutes, we are going to visit a Disney cast member, and he has some very special things that are for boomers when visiting Disney World. You cannot miss this one. And since you're going to book your vacations right away, we also have some fun hobbies for boomers and some trivia from the past. Let's watch together. My guest today is John Kenny, and he is a Disney cast member. Welcome, John. Hi, Shahar. Thanks for having me. Oh, thank you very much for being here. John, I want you to tell me what's cool on Disney World for boomers. You know, many times I know we go with our grandchildren there, but what else is there for us? If it's just adults, there's a lot of uh, options for just adults uh, looking for uh, fun things to do. First of all, in my opinion, doing anything at Disney World as adults, as my wife and I like to experience, uh, is fine. I mean, you can still ride all the same great attractions. You can still interact with all of the characters. It's still fun. Uh, what a lot of people don't realize about interacting with the characters is that they interact back with you. Uh, so you can actually ask, you know, uh, if you have like a, a character breakfast or something, you know, I like to ask Mickey Mouse, you know, if he, if he already ate breakfast or if he's going back for seconds and he'll make some kind of a gesture because they don't talk but they do interact with you, they do communicate with you, and so you can have a lot of fun with that, uh, and it does bring out the kid in you. There's the uh, the fireworks cruise, which I think is uh, a very perfect opportunity for uh, anyone that's celebrating an anniversary, wants to do something intimate away from the large groups uh, at the parks. They can do the fireworks cruises, or they can do the uh, dining cruises, and that's an intimate boat ride, and you can watch the fireworks out in front of uh, the park on, in your in your own boat, with uh, you know the boat captain and there's some refreshments on board and it's a it's a really unique experience. Of course, uh, there's golf. There's lots and lots of Disney golf. Uh, Disney oh, has really? yes, they have some of the best golf courses in the world. They're PGA style uh, courses and uh, many professionals play down here. They actually have tournaments that uh, happen in the Orlando area as well. But uh, the the courses at Disney themselves are just fantastic. There's the slower moving attractions can be uh, just as fun as any of the roller coasters, especially if you are taking grandchildren with you. Mm -hmm. uh, doing things like It's a Small World or Pirates of the Caribbean or the Haunted Mansion, those yeah. are all great choices, especially if you've got small children in your party. You don't want to do something really, really crazy. Uh, you don't want to do Space Mountain or Splash Mountain that may be a little too intense for little ones or even for some of us older folks. But uh, there's also, um, well, that's just Magic Kingdom. Then at Epcot, you have the land boat ride. You have the Maelstrom. These are slow-moving boat rides. And, of course, dining at Epcot is one of the best places in all of Walt Disney World to do any kind of dining, especially interacting with characters. Um, the World Showcase has, uh, they do the Food and Wine Festival every fall, and that is something that, many adults just clamor for them. They want to come down and experience all the different food and all the different wine pairings that go with the different food. It's basically like a hundred different countries are represented around the world showcase in addition to what they've already got. There's just a ton of different countries with lots of different cuisines that you can experience. Uh, and that's a, a really popular uh, a festival that happens here. There's also at Epcot the Flower and Garden Festival which is coming up in this spring uh, and it runs from March through May. And um, there's a concert series, as well with the Food and Wine Festival, there's also a concert series. And um, so there's bands from the 70s, from the 80s, and even from the 90s that come perform at the, um, they call it the American Gardens Pavilion. Uh, it's the amphitheater in front of the American Adventure at Epcot. We just had, of course, uh, the, uh, the, the Christmas and the holiday 
seasonal stuff going on. Uh, there's a thing at Epcot called the Candlelight Processional, and uh, basically there's like a, a giant choir. I, I'm trying to remember, like 250 voice choir with a full orchestra, and there's a celebrity narrator that narrates the uh, the Christmas story, the story of Christmas. Uh, Neil Patrick Harris was just here. He did it. Uh, <laughs> And um, sometimes Marley Matlin comes out and she actually signs uh, the Christmas story while someone else reads. It's really, really cool. It's a really unique experience that uh, doesn't involve riding a lot of rides and standing in the heat. Mm -hmm. um, there's also uh, Downtown Disney. There's a lot to experience at Downtown Disney food-wise, entertainment-wise. You have Cirque du Soleil. You have Splitsville, which just recently opened this past year. Uh, it's uh, bowling and dining and drinking. It's a really fun place mm -hmm. to hang out. Of course, there's the movie theater. There's lots of different uh, restaurants. Uh, Paradisio 37 is one of the nicest restaurants over there uh, in um, Pleasure Island. And um, if you want a really unique experience, especially for adults looking for adult nightlife kind of situations, um, there's two places. Actually, we'll make it three places that I highly recommend over at Disney's Boardwalk. The first is the ESPN Club. Uh, ESPN Zone, it's this uh, restaurant where you can watch all your favorite sporting events. They just had a big deal over there for the Super Bowl. And then there's Atlantic Dance. It's a nightclub. Uh, it, it attracts anyone from the 21 and up to, you know, I'd say 45 and up crowd. It's a video dance party. That's what you got to think. It's like, a, it's like a dance club, but there's a giant video screen, and uh, it's just a nice place to uh, have a few drinks. Uh, and, of course, my personal favorite and uh, I think you know why, is Jelly Rolls, which is the dueling piano bar over at the boardwalk. So that's uh, some of the adult nightlife stuff you can do. And of course, um, you, there's, I mean, there's so many options in all the theme parks. If you go to Disney's Hollywood Studios, you have Toy Story Mania, you have the Indiana Jones Epic Stunt Spectacular, Lights, Motors, Action. Uh, if you go to Animal Kingdom, the uh, Kilimanjaro Safaris is amazing. And it's, you know, all these are slow, easy uh, uh, not too active paced attractions that you can experience and that um, uh, they're, they're great with kids, they're great for any, anyone in their uh, older years and um, it's, it's, I personally like them because I don't have a very active imagination. I like to ride a couple of roller coasters but I like to take things nice and slow uh -huh. so th that's the kind of things that I would do. That would be my recommendations and that's what my parents and my wife's parents also enjoy. Now, there's one other place that I want to share with you, Shahar, which is one of my favorites. It's the most fun you're ever going to have, and it's called Hoopty Doo Review. Think of a country western variety show with actors and music and audience interaction. It's really just crazy madness, uh, comedy, great singing, lots of fun, just uh, off the cuff little vaudevillian jokes. Um, it's Hoopty Doo Review, and it's at the Fort Wilderness Campgrounds, and uh, it's a fantastic show. And it's a dinner theater. So imagine all you can eat fried chicken, all you can eat ribs, all you can drink beer. You can drink as much beer as you want, or soda, or tea, whatever you prefer. Uh -huh. um, and then it comes in rounds. And when they come out, they actually have like a plate or a, a bucket. They'll put these metal plates on your table. They'll take the bucket, drop it right in front of you, and it scares <laughs> you. It startles you. But it's so much fun. Hoop TV Review is uh, one of the coolest things that you can do. That's fantastic. You know, I have to try all this because last time I was at Disney, my daughter actually picked up all the wild rides for us to go. So I didn't try anything slow pace, so I have to try that. Oh, there's so much to do. I don't, I don't think you could experience it in two weeks. I mean, I've been here for four and a half years, and I still haven't done absolutely everything. John, stay in line. Disney has a new cool feature for us to avoid that a little bit. Remember, we talked before about the... I don't know how you call those bands or how you call them. The magic bands. Here. Yes. I happen to have one right here. Uh, this is my blue magic bands. And um, it's, uh, it's RFID technology. Now they are uh, they're still in the beta testing phase of this uh, uh, technology. It's called My Magic Plus. They're also doing a thing called Fast Pass Plus, uh, which works with your iPhone. You have an iPhone app that corresponds with your magic band. And you can decide which fast passes you would like to select for the park that you're going to, even the day before. So you can actually plan out your entire day, and um, you can pre-select these specific attractions. In fact, all the fast passes, uh, what they're moving into this paperless system, where they're going to be on your Magic Band, or they're actually going to be on your Key to the World card, is what you're, they call your room key. And this is your room key 
This is your credit card. You can make purchases with this. You just uh, touch the point, and then you enter a PIN number, so it's secure. It's also um, your park ticket, your fast pass, your photo pass. They're putting uh, everything. They're simplifying the entire system so that you don't have to worry about juggling all kinds of different things. It's really awesome technology. Uh, I'm very excited to see the, the development stages of it, and um, it's right now it's available to resort guests. Uh, the Magic Bands are. Of course, the technology exists with the Key to the World card, so when you get your park ticket, it would be with that as well. But um, you know, probably by next year, it's going to be everywhere. I think it's a fantastic thing. John, one more thing. You told me in another conversation that after you see the fireworks, it's not just time for you to go and get out, right? There's a, a lot more going on that you can can do. Can you tell us a little bit more about that? Sure. So what happens is uh, you wake up at like 6.30 in the morning, you eat breakfast, you get your family together, you all jump on the monorail, you head over to Magic Kingdom, you get there at 9 o'clock when the door is open, and you, everybody floods in, and they ride rides, and they eat food, and they wear themselves out all day long, and they say, we just got to tough it out until 8 o'clock or 9 o'clock or 10 o'clock, whatever the fireworks are. And you sit there and you watch the fireworks, and then what does everybody do? They all turn around and head towards the exit. But the park is actually most likely going to be open a little bit later. Now you have to check your park times. Sometimes the fireworks do go off at park closing. More often than not, you have a couple hours left of park time before you actually have to leave, and that's when all the lines disperse. Everybody leaves, and now you almost have the place to yourself. That's one of the things that I like to recommend to people is, no, 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 go late. Go really early, and then go really late. <laughs> That's awesome. Now, I know there's a lot more, but you wrote an ebook about that, right? Can you get tell people how they can get that? Absolutely. Um, there's one other thing I want to add to this whole conversation uh, that's also something that not a lot of people know about, and it's not located directly at Walt Disney World, but it is here in the state of Florida. It's actually Disney's Vero Beach Resort. Uh, for anyone that is looking for that really slow-paced relaxation vacation, this is a place to look into as well. It's about two hours southeast of Orlando. It's right on the beach, right on the Atlantic Ocean. It's a beautiful, fantastic resort, one of my favorites. Uh, my wife and I like to go there. We sit in the rocking chairs, and we just listen to the waves, and it's so nice and relaxing. So if you're looking for that kind of a vacation, that's also uh, one of my recommendations is checking out Disney's Vero Beach Resort. Yeah. Fantastic place. It's amazing. Yeah. Um, if you'd like to learn more about these kind of things, I've got dozens of these tips in my ebook. It's called The Cast Member's Guide to Walt Disney World. And you can actually download a free sample of this book by going to freedisneyguide.com. Freedisneyguide.com. Awesome. And you have a podcast, right, that people can keep up to date on everything Disney, right? Absolutely, Shahar. I'm doing a podcast five days a week, um, and uh, so far it's gotten great responses. I've gotten a lot of friends on Twitter that are just uh, blowing me up. Just They love the show, and so I'm happy to mention them. They, uh, A lot of them have actually shared some of their secrets with me as well, and I've mentioned them, and they've gotten really excited to uh, you know hear their name on the podcast, and so they're telling their friends. And I, I'm telling you, this thing started with very little audience, and now it's grown to over 1,200 downloads in the first two weeks. Very excited about those numbers because I can see the potential of that even expanding further. But what we do with this podcast, it's I try to keep it between 7 to 10 minutes long, and it's every single day. So each week we'll have a theme. For instance, the, the theme for this week was Disney dining and using the Disney dining plan and going around to the different parks and the different restaurants uh, in the resort areas. And uh, I gave some of my recommendations for dining and that's the theme for the week. But then Mondays is Magic Kingdom. Tuesdays is Epcot. Wednesday is Disney's Hollywood Studios. Thursdays is Animal Kingdom. And Friday is our open day where we can talk about anything from water parks to downtown Disney to any other uh, recommendations that we can help you plan the ultimate Disney vacation experience. And because they're less than 10 minutes, they're really easy to consume. We only share like one simple idea per each episode. And... Uh, and we're also I'm doing something a little bit different, but uh, I was told that this was a really cool feature. In my podcast, I'm sharing the weather. I'm telling you about the weather in Orlando. Nice. And for those of you that are stuck in those northern states, I'm from Michigan, so I know how to shovel snow. I've done it a million times. Uh, when you hear that it's 84 degrees and sunny in February, 
you want to go there. So, uh, so check that out as well. I'm, I'm going to be sharing uh, the weather, of course, with all these amazing Disney tips, the kind of things that we're talking about, Shahar, and uh, all the uh, different Disney resorts, dining parks, you name it, anything Disney, uh, it, that's where it's going to. That's where you're going to be able to find it. Uh, and that's uh, that's the Cast Member Secrets podcast. Uh, you can find that just simply by going to castmembersecrets.com. Awesome, awesome. I, I know people will be really excited with that. Thank you very much, John. And you know, I'm feeling like I need to tell Nash right now we need to plan our next trip to Disney. I, I know somebody who can help you with that. I know, I know. <laughs> <laughs> Let me know if you guys would love to come down. I would love to have you here, show you around. I'll give you. I'll even give you a personal tour. Oh boy! Oh boy! I'm well, there. Uh, I'll show you a great time, and I'll show you some of the best places to eat. Show you how to have that relaxing vacation experience, right. and right. Um, it, it would be great to see you down here. I think you'd really enjoy it. I think she would enjoy it too. Oh, I bet so. So, so let me know if any if I can help you with that at all. And uh, anybody else, if you have any questions, you can contact me via my site, castmembersecrets.com. Uh, just click contact. If you have any questions, I'd love to answer them on the podcast. You can check out the podcast, and uh, I'm really excited. And I, I can't thank you enough, Shahar, for having me on here. I oh, think that no. being on this show has been a major impact already in in my uh, business. So I I'm really excited to see what happens next. You know, I know boomers are crazy about Disney. We grew up with that, right? It's part of our ourselves. So. I, I, I know so many people that like to go and take their first, their grandchild one by one to spend quality time with them. And, and of course, there are people like me that I don't have grandkids, but I like to go and I like to enjoy. And now I just know a lot more about the cool stuff that, that we can do there. Right. So, castmembersecrets.com, right? Yes. Thank you very much, John. Thank you, Shahar. Take care. You know what? Lately, I've been looking for some fun stuff to do. So I actually made a list of things I like to do. Maybe that will bring spark some ideas in your mind about our, what you can do for fun. One of the things that I do a lot that I like is called geocaching. Did you ever hear about that? It's a treasure hunt. Actually, there are treasures all around your city, in the city, outside in the field. They're easy ones to find. They're ones that are more complicated. These treasures, they are called caches. Well, you have to use your cell phone or your GPS to find it. And then you, when you find, you sign your name. It's very, very fun. You go online and you log. And there are competitions. There are challenges. Actually, my daughter and I, two years ago, we did the Utah Challenge, where you had to find one cache in every single part of the state following the atlas. It was really, really fun. You know, the feeling of accomplishing something and doing something that other people don't do, very fun, very fun to do with family and with grandchildren as well. So try geocaching, Google that online so you can see what that is exactly. Another thing that you can do is metal detecting. I haven't tried that yet, but I have a friend that has the metal detector and every time he's at the beach or someplace having a picnic, he carries that around. It's fun and sometimes he finds some cool stuff. Collecting can be a very cool hobby. There are many, many things you can collect out there. You have to organize them, you have to file them, you have really even to dust them every single uh, once in a while. So here you have uh, three hobbies that you can adopt. There are many more, right? Like photography, we talked about that before. We love wildlife photography. Camera, your backyard, you're good to go. So here are a few ideas that I was jotting down for myself that maybe you can start trying that too and just have something else to do when you have some free time. As we age, memory can be a factor in our daily lives. We might start forgetting things and many reasons for that, the busy life, the level of stress or many times too some neurological problems. But there are things we can do to improve our memory. They are very easy. And it's all within eating real foods. I have listed here some of the foods that help boost your memories and the reason why. Avocados, for example. Who doesn't like avocados, right? In my country, for example, we usually eat avocados as a dessert. We mix the avocado with sugar. It's very good. In many other cultures, it's just part of salads and salty foods. What's really important here is that it increases blood flood to the brain. So eat your avocados every day if you can. And of course, it also has a very healthy fat. Apples are great because vitamin C is known, is a known factor to aid 
in Alzheimer's. So consume your apple. You know the old saying, right? One apple a day, keep the doctor away. Dark chocolate. This is the perfect excuse for more chocolate, isn't it? Reduces inflammation and oxidation in the brain that causes neurological problems. We know that a lot of the, the health problems that we might face are due to inflammation. So every single food that decreases inflammation is important to have in our diets. And dark chocolate is one of them. Green tea. I, for one, love tea. I drink it almost every day. It lowers the amount of protein build up that causes memory loss. Okay, so it helps to take away that, that protein build up from our brain. And blueberries. I know if you buy blueberries today, it's written everywhere. It's the brain food, right? It improves, it improves learning, motor skills, and your vision. So here, five very easy to get types of food that can improve your memory. So don't forget to go to the supermarket and get them. I'm getting ready to go on another road trip. This time, I'm going with a friend that wants to visit her grandchildren. It's going to be lots of fun. But she's having some issues getting in and out of the bed and sometimes even walking. So that's why I'm going to take one of my favorite standard products, the Metro Travel Bed King. It's very easy to carry, very light. I can carry in road trips or even at the airport. What's most important is when we get there, no matter what bed she will have, it will adjust to that bed and it also adjusts the height. Like I said, it's very easy to use and she can also use as a walking cane. And this sleek design doesn't get in the way of the home at all. So we are going to have a fun time and she'll have the assistance she needs getting in and out of the bed. You know, if you travel a lot, visit loved ones, don't forget to get for yourself a Metro Travel bed cane from Standard. That's a great product. I was talking to my daughter the other day about fun stuff that I used to do with my family. You know, and there were a few that we always used to get together, all of us, with a simple, simple thing. Do you remember pick up sticks? You know those bunch of sticks that you would throw on the table and then you had to move them out without moving the other ones? That was a fascinating game that everybody would enjoy. And you know, my brothers, my sisters, my father, my mother, we would all play that. Actually, I, I would carry that around quite a bit, especially when we were traveling. That was so portable, right, that we could take anywhere and so fun. I was actually very good at pulling the sticks out of the, the bunch of sticks. I don't know. With your family, what did you used to do and what kind of games did you really play with them? You know, it's really good to go back sometimes. I hope you enjoyed the show this week. If you did, don't forget to share, thumbs up, rate our channel. These are the type of things that keep us going. And I'll meet you next week at Boomerology Revealed. This episode of Boomerology Revealed is brought to you by Standard, your best option for mobility products. Be independent with Standard.com. <laughs>